Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back to Real Estate Coaching Radio, and we are your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris, and we are broadcasting from an absolutely gorgeous Austin, Texas. So there was a story that boiled up over the weekend, starting last Friday, um, that Inman News broke, and we're going to be talking about that and on today's radio show, but more specifically, we're going to talk about why more than ever, uh, what's happening with Zillow and Trulia, if you're still stuck in the buying buyer leads paradigm, is absolutely something uh, you need to be questioning, because what you're going to learn today is definitely going to change your mindset about continuing to do business with the companies, or maybe it won't. It'll be your decision based on what we're about to share with you. So, Julie, why don't you go ahead and read the brief introduction to today's show, and then we're going to get to the specifics. All right, perfect. So again, we're referring to what was broken over the weekend in in the news, and here's what happened. An anonymous whistleblower has sent Attorneys for Move, Inc. a letter containing detailed accusations of data theft by Zillow, which include what's called scraping or scraping of listing data from the Realtor.com website, developing data quality software that works by scraping the Realtor.com site even further and then the outright theft of MLS contacts, listings, and other databases from Move Inc., essentially from Realtor.com. The letter also claims that incoming CEO Errol Samuelson worked while under court injunction and provides a level of detail presumed uh, to be, I mean, very, uh, I don't know, controversial. This is kind of crazy, right? So Andrea Bramblia from Inman News broke the story on April 10th in uh, title, uh, uh, the title was Whistleblower Alleges Zillow is Stealing Listing Data from Agent Websites. Again, that's the title from Inman. And today we're discussing what this means for the industry, for Zillow, and specifically, most importantly, what it means for your personal real estate practices. Back to you, Tim. And what's really, yeah, thank you, Jules. And so what's really interesting about that uh, Inman article is they also included I'm not quite sure where they got this, but they actually included what appears to be the actual memo that was sent from the whistleblower uh, to move. And it is extremely interesting if you've been following any of this sort of drama, this portal drama for years. It's kind of interesting whether or not it's true or not. Time will tell, but it is still fascinating to sort of see maybe it's some limited perspective depending on if it is all or partially true on what kind of goes on behind the scenes of these big portals. So the question is, well, first of all, I want to make it really clear. Yeah, uh, and uh, t- there's several people out there that are trying to pigeonhole Julie and I and our coaching organization into being pro this or anti that. We're not pro this or really anti anything. That's just the truth. Like, uh, you know, we're not pro team or anti team. We're pro you guys making a, a decision based on sound results or sound facts before you just sort of follow like sheep and decide to be, form a team. And we're going to be talking about teams, by the way, the rest of the week on the radio show. And we're not pro Zillow or pro Trulia. We're not pro anything. Uh, we're pro you guys. That's the bottom line. And if you find that buying buyer leads makes sense for you, um, and you're doing and you're getting closable transactions from it, why would you stop? You wouldn't is the answer. So if buying buyer leads for one of the big portals is working for you, I strongly encourage you to well a make sure you know for a fact that it's working for you by tracking your closed transactions all the way back to the lead coming from those sites. Easy enough. Um, and if, if you are one of the uh, agents out there that are doing well, depending on your market, there are some out there that I know are doing very well buying buyer leads, then maybe what you should consider is getting better at it, getting more efficient at it, getting more efficient at your system so that you can actually convert more uh, you know, bought buyer leads into more closed transactions. But we're not just summarily saying, well, Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor.com and any of the other sources that buy buyer leads are a bad idea, because they're not. It is an agent-by-agent, market-by-market thing. So study that, know that for a fact. Don't just, again, just to drive this point home, just don't assume because you're reading online that it's working for somebody in a different market that's going to work for you. Because as you're about to learn, that's not the case. Now, why, again, why are we focused on this? Because our focus is the individual practitioner. Our focus are all of you guys. Our thousands of coaching clients, you know, individual agents for the most part, that's where our focus is. And this Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com thing, as, as some people out there are just pulling their hair out. They're so bored of hearing about this. 
But the reason it is relevant is because it directly affects you, and here's why. So, you know, the bottom line is is that those of you who are still buying leads may experience a dramatic decrease in business. When ListHub cut the feed off from Zillow last week, it effectively cut Zillow off from a large uh, – uh, basically most of the listings in the country. Now, nobody knows for sure, right? Zillow says it's really by a percentage, it's not that many, and maybe they're right. Time will tell. We'll know more by May. So it could be very well that come you know, May, June, this was a non-event and that Zillow was able to uh, legally uh, and ethically, uh, through uh, direct broker and MLS relationships, build up their inventory so they, it turns out, didn't need ListHub in the first place. That might happen. We're going to stay tuned and see if it does happen. But what you, again, our focus being individual practitioners, what you guys need to be focused on is the fact that that may not happen. And so here's what's going to happen. No consumer traffic or a great uh, reduction in consumer traffic, consumer traffic that's looking for a home, not just consumer traffic that's going on Zillow to check their home's value, but buyer traffic. So a reduction in Zillow uh, in, in uh, traffic to Zillow uh, will not generate the same level of impressions. And let's just call impressions what they are. They're buyer leads to sell to agents. So, it's, again, it's yet to be disclosed. It's yet to be known how widespread the Zillow listings will drop as a result of the end of the List Hub um, relationship uh, because they aren't reporting it. So here is what might happen, or here is what you need to be aware that might happen for you. Zillow is absolutely positively raising prices in many markets, and at the same time, Zillow is losing listings in the markets, in, uh, which will lead to, inevitably, agents who thought they were getting buyer leads from Zillow uh, not getting the leads that they thought they were uh, pay, uh, paying for. So let's say, for example, in the past you were getting a certain number of leads, a certain number of closed transactions from Zillow, and it made sense for you to continue being one of their customers. Great. Congratulations. You know, Like I said earlier, get better at it. Get better at converting. Get better at selling. That's all great. But now what happens is, say, for example, Zillow is not able to feature as many homes for sale in your particular market. What does that mean? It means that the, the eyeballs, the consumer buyer eyeballs, aren't going to be going to Zillow anymore. And at the end of this call, guys, guys we're going to give you a very specific homework assignment, um, basically a little you know, three-question test that you can uh, take immediate action on to know whether or not you need to be worried about this, what we're discussing and disclosing to you or not. So... So you might be in one of the markets where essentially, and it's spotty too, like if you look at L.A., there's reasons to believe that they're going to have great coverage in some areas. By coverage, I mean a listings that will be featured on Zillow. In other areas, they're not going to have great coverage. But the bottom line is, and you know, I'm not, again, pro or anti-realtor.com, but realtor.com is going to have, without a doubt, no questions asked, full stop, the most expansive coverage of any of the portals. They just are because of ListHub's relationship with the MLSs and because the MLSs' relationships, obviously, with the brokers and the brokers' relationships with the listing agents. Because of all that, Realtor.com is going to have, and for that matter, any ListHub uh, customers, of which there's a lot, who also basically subscribe to ListHub's feed. Their you know, bottom line is, is that Realtor.com is going to have the best information. Eventually, uh, it only makes sense that the eyeballs are going to go away from Zillow and Trulia, buyers looking for homes, because they're going to hop online and they're going to see that the listings aren't as, you know, basically there. They drove past the house, looked on their Zillow app, hypothetically, and it's not there. Well, then they're going to say, well, I'm going to go to Roller.com. And once that consumer uh, behavior changes, once they're not seeing uh, Zillow, Trulia, and Roller.com is interchangeable, once they're realizing that Roller.com's data is better, then do you think they're going to go back to the other sites? Not likely. So here's as we move forward, I want you to keep those three thoughts in mind. Zillow is raising prices in many markets, and at the same time, Zillow is losing listings for many markets, which will lead to agents who thought they would get buyer leads from Zillow, Trulia, not getting the leads they thought they were getting. And so where this leads to is some of you who are in these contracts with Zillow and Trulia, and I think it's close to 100,000 of you are in contracts where you're spending, what is an average of $435 a month, I think, buying leads from these guys. Again, in some markets, that's a great deal. But you might be finding that the value proposition to you is changing dramatically because the number of leads and the quality of leads that you're getting is dramatically decreased. Now, I want to caution all of you, too. One of the things that I'm sure Zillow is going to do is they're going to try to make up for the lost consumer traffic, uh, buyer you know, search traffic, by getting people to go to their site for other reasons. And hopefully those will then uh, uh, show up as um, uh, you know, possible impressions that lead to leads for you guys. So they might write, write an article or release an article on Brad and Angelina buying some new whatever and wherever, 
And as a result of that, a lot of people will find that and want to click on it and read it. And then they might, so those are not what one would call a real focused buyer lead. But in, in the process of reading some of that sort of celebrity housing gossip, they're going to then fill out a form and that form is going to be sold to you guys back as a lead. So some of you are saying, well, why are the buyer leads decreasing in quality? I just told you, that's why. And will that be happening um, on a widespread basis? Well, of course it will, because Zillow needs to be uh, able to tell the story that they're not losing traffic. If their comp score rating drops, if all of a sudden they find themselves having fewer people uh, going to their site, that's going to hurt their everything. And now do they talk about how many impressions that they sold to agents, in other words, buyer leads that they're able to uh, sell to, their diff- to all their subscribers? I don't really – I'm not very familiar if that data has been published anywhere because I don't think it has. So what Julie is about to read to all of you, and again, we're going to give you a three-question test at the end of today's radio show. But what she's about to read to you is going to be excerpts from this Inman article. Obviously, I want you guys to go back to Inman and read this article. It's a fantastic article. Some of the best reporting I've ever seen on Inman, if you want to know the truth, uh, really drills down on some of the things that you know we've been kind of suspecting and warning all of our listeners that's probably going to happen at the end of this at the end of this list hub relationship. And unfortunately, I do that. I do mean that sincerely. I don't like. Uh, the fact that we predicted that some of this stuff would be happening. I was hoping it wouldn't, but it has. And as a result of that, guys, it's not the consumer's view of the real estate industry. It's frankly the cons- uh, the realtor's view of basically how they can go about you know, trusting different companies to buy leads from. So with that said, Julie, starting with an anonymous wh- uh, whistleblower is yep. alleging – yeah, you got it. So again, highlights from that Inman article, an anonymous whistleblower is alleging that Zillow steals listing data from agent websites in order to compare it to data scraped from Realtor.com and see where its own site is following short. The whistleblower alleges that, and here's four quick bullet points. The whistleblower alleges that, number one, that Zillow sales team scrapes customer lists from Realtor.com to target potential advertisers. Number two, that Zillow is running secret programs called LSS and LSS version 2 around listing quality. Number three, that Samuelson was working while under a preliminary injunction contrary to Zillow's claims. And number four, that Zillow executive Kurt Beardsley stole multiple listing service contact listing and other databases from Move, which was his former employer, and keeps them in the cloud using them for his work at Zillow. Now, Move spokeswoman Lexi Puckett in an emailed statement said, we find it especially troubling that confidential industry data and agent websites may have been illegally accessed and used by Zillow for its own purposes. That is a matter of great concern to our partners in the industry. Now, the letter claims, quote, Zillow illegally uses the Realtor.com website to benchmark their listing count and figure out what listings are missing. They also illegally access IDIX listing data from the Diverse Solutions subcompany, which is the stolen, uh, stolen from agent websites, in order to compare against data scraped from Realtor.com. It's run from offshore, so it can't even be traced back to Seattle. So, Tim, what does this mean to these guys? What can they actually do about this? Other than, I mean, it starts with being informed and knowing what's actually happening. And then what does an agent do with this new information, this breaking story? Well, again, who cares about all the drama between these two corporations? I mean, it's sort of interesting right. in the same way like a Mexican soap opera might be interesting. Let's be honest. It doesn't really have much to do with any of us. As individual practitioners, this stuff is just noise. But the reason it is relevant is because if you are buying leads from Zillow, and let's say half of these accusations from this whistleblower are true, well, you guys know that there's going to be some dramatic changes in the leads you're buying from Zillow. And if you're stuck in a contract with them, or if you're getting a solicitation e- or you know phone call right now from the information that they got from evidently uh, from uh, Realtor.com from the scraping, if they got your information from that website, chance is because they knew then that you were a subscriber to Realtor.com. See that how these are supposedly all these points are being laced together. So if you're then getting a solicitation call from them because of the scraped information they got from Realtor.com, you know you need to seriously question as to whether or not, yeah, sure, maybe now they're able to sell you a certain number of impressions, and maybe it makes sense. But as it goes, for, as things progress, 
And as they lose their ability to uh, have as many homes featured on their website as, say, for example, Realtor.com, but you're stuck in a contract with these guys, what are you going to do? You're not just going to be able to call up and say, hey, you know, you were, you know, selling me 10 con- or 10 sale, uh, buyer leads uh, per month last month, and now I'm only getting seven. They're going to say what? Well, you know what? Let's just wait another month. And then you're going to say, well, you know, it's been four months into my six-month contract. I'm not happy with the results. We're going to get it. I want to cancel. I'm pretty much sure the answer is, well, tough. You've got to pay another two months. So you guys got to be thinking this through and deciding whether or not this is the smart thing for you to do for your business. I know it's easy for you to rationalize buying buyer leads. Because after all, you just turn on your computer and there are some leads for you to chase down. And I know conceptually that's very sexy. It's very attractive. I totally and completely get it. But as we've been warning you for over a year, when we started seeing uh, the ice break under a lot of this buying buyer lead business, it's not just Zillow and Trulia. I mean, the fact is Zillow and Trulia have done up to maybe the List Hub break up on April 7th. They've done a brilliant job where, if we're being completely honest, Realtor.com hasn't. There's a reason that Zillow has become the most dominant portal in the in the world, really, maybe. I don't know about you know the world, but certainly the United States. It's because they did a better job. I mean, the executives and the founders and the sales team and all of the you know their website, everything was executed really brilliantly. Um, now they deserve to win. The folks that have started that company have become very, very wealthy, and it's as a result of them being able to execute something that at the end of the day, agents were willing to pay for and consumers were willing to uh, use as a trusted resource. So they deserve to win. But now that they don't have access to the listings, as we have been talking about and focusing all of our students on, again, we don't care at the end of the day, to be honest with you guys, I don't care where the, uh, you know, what number, who the number one portal is. Julie and I don't own stock in any of these companies. We're not short sellers of Zillow. You know, so we've been accused of that because we, con- you know, we talk about this topic like you know, two, three times a month. We don't really have any vested interest in, in any of these companies uh, becoming number one or number three or you know, number nothing. Okay, We don't really care. At the end of the day, the only thing that we care about are the individual agents out there who are trying to make decisions as to what's going to be best for their business. And if you whip out your credit card and you sub- sign up for you know, $500, $400 a month for buyer leads, thinking that they're going to be the solution that you've been looking for, the silver bullet, as I know so many of you are attracted to, Chances are you're going to be sorely disappointed and you're going to lose out on what's going to be or should be one of your best years ever. So some of you are right on the fence as to whether or not you should be buying buyer leads from anybody. I would strongly suggest that you don't. And the bottom line is, is because buyer leads are the easiest thing in the world to self-generate. I'm going to say that again. Buyer leads are the easiest thing in the world to self-generate. Literally, in most markets in the country right now, if you have a listing, you have to beat the buyers off with a stick. There's so many different, and I mean that jokingly, of course. I don't want you guys beating buyers with sticks. We better Tim clarify that. said I had that. to beat my buyers with a stick. No, we're joking. <laughs> well, for the you know what, though? Let's be honest. Some buyers might, might deserve it, but that's beside the point. <laughs> well, that's true. Pre-qualify. Yeah. So, Use a pre-qualify script. <laughs> pre-qualify before you beat it with a stick. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you guys should be accepting the fact that, okay, I'm buying buyer leads. Why? Because I have a big team and I have a bunch of buyers buyer agents to, you know, to feed, or I'm an individual practitioner or somewhere in the middle, I'm looking for buyer leads. Hey, guys, guess what? If you have listings, and you don't even have to have a lot of listings in most markets, and you use something like 1-800-HOME-HOTLINE.COM, or really just essentially work the open houses, or do the other things that we suggest you to do, the very basic things, the buyers will come out of the woodwork looking for your uh, listing. I'm not talking about buyers here and there. We, you know, we're coaching the number one agent in Iowa, the number one agent in South Dakota, the number one agent in some of these markets where you'd be surprised how many transactions they do. And you know what? None of them buy buyer leads. They just do a lot of the things we teach them to do as far as being coaching students to generate their own buyer leads. So the fact is buyer leads are easy to generate when you know how to get a listing. But isn't that where the problem is? Isn't that where the challenge is? But Tim, listen, I get it. You don't have to preach to me anymore. I get the importance of becoming a listing agent. Hopefully, that's what a lot of you are thinking. Well, then, can you please do something about it? Can you please actually decide to no longer be one of these agents that are stuck in this hamster wheel of buying buyer leads? Can you please, please make a decision to become a listing agent? It's not that difficult. It really isn't. If you don't believe me, look at the agents in your marketplace who have listings. I mean, come on now. So the reality of it is, is where the shift has to happen 
for you as an individual practitioner to finally have some resemblance of control in your business, to have consistent cash flow, to feel, honestly, to feel like you have a business is you have to learn how to become a listing agent. Julie, I know your brain is going in a bunch of different places. I can just kind of feel it over the radio waves. What are you thinking? Yeah, well, I think that there's never been so much pressure to be a listing agent. You've got what we're discussing today, the whole happenings with Zillow and buying buyer leads. And then you have the uh, contraction of inventory, right? So I always say if you have the choice, there's a listing today on your street. It's the only listing in the neighborhood. Would you rather be the listing agent or the 17 buyer's agents that have buyers trying to buy that? Only one of those buyers can win. So that puts extra pressure on being that listing agent because that listing agent has that house good and sold. They get to say, lather, rinse, repeat. Meanwhile, they get buyer leads from the listing. They maybe even sell it themselves. So you know that's what it does boil down to because if you think about it, why do agents pay for buyer leads in the first place? Because they're probably not strong listing agents. Well, then that puts you in the bucket of having to figure out where your buyer leads are coming from, and you might be subject to deciding who are you going to pay for those leads, what's the quality of the leads, what's the quantity of the leads, and now your business really is completely out of your control, right? So it gets back to being a great listing agent and learning how to self-generate. That's how you end up leading with revenue. You know, some of the previous radio calls that we've talked about is how to pay yourself first, what's the difference between an agent with a, a, an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset and, and this buying of buyer leads and trying to keep track of what's going on with who and who's the best portal and where are they getting their intel from. I mean, that's kind of exhausting even to report on, much less be subject to as an agent who's trying to feed their family or do even more than that in life, right? Which is what listing agents, by and large, are the ones who are doing. Make so sense? yeah, guys, trust me. Trust me when I tell you, nobody more than Julie and I are more bored of the portal wars. Nobody more than Julie and I are bored of all the drama associated with Realtor.com, Trulia.com. Well, but we report on it because they need to know what's going on. It's our responsibility and accountability as their coaches and future coaches and their radio hosts to let them know what in the world's going on with all that. It's most it's mostly a wonky conversation about very rich people. That's really at the end of the day yeah. what it's, what the story is about. That's the truth. But you know what? Our hearts and our minds and our passion are about individual practitioners. You guys, we have close to a hundred thousand of you listen to us on a regular basis. And the fact is, is that we owe it to all of you to maybe tell you things that you don't want to hear. Maybe tell you things that you don't want to hear in a way that you don't want to hear it. And sometimes that offends you, and I get it, and that's okay, because we're making a point that you need to hear. We're not just saying things because our egos want us to be you know, your big gurus. That really isn't even on our list of things to do. Being a guru is, frankly, a little bit offensive to me. What we want to do is we want to make, teach you guys to be your own gurus. I mean, a guru, by definition, is someone's going to take the power away from you and you're going to be relying on that person. That's not what we're about. We're about educating you guys so you can be independent, independent primarily financially, okay? So that is our primary focus. Those of you who have been listening and certainly those of you who are coaching students know that we mean what we say, okay? Please be clear about that, that we don't like talking about this topic any more than you do, but as Julie just said, it's so important, especially for those of you who are stuck in the paradigm of buying buyer leads. It's not sustainable. It's not going to last. Please get your head out of your – the word that reminds us last, but I'm not going to say it, okay? So oh, please be really be, – please be really – I didn't say it, Julie. Am I getting praised because I, I didn't use a bad I word? Know. I know. I'm saying yeah, I, I thought that was very crafty, That uh, the implication. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, guys, moment. Um, the, we are going to be talking uh, the rest of this week – uh, about teams. Now, um, that's something else that I'm kind of getting sick of being misquoted about in the press. Julie and I are being kind of pigeonholed into being anti-team. Nothing could be further from the truth. What we are anti is running a non-profitable business. So for the rest of the week, we're going to be really drilling down. No guests. We had some guests scheduled, but we moved them because it's really important that we focus all of you guys on how to build a successful, profitable team. I know that we're going to be sharing with you some things that are going to be, hold on, that is what Gary Keller said, I get it. We're going to be breaking with the religion of team building, and that's fine. At least then you'll have additional information that might counter some of the um, information you've been leading to believe is true, and then seeing it from a different perspective. That is our primary objective for the rest of this week's radio show. And in the meantime, I strongly encourage all of you guys to go to Inman.com and read the article because they did a brilliant job reporting it. Some of the comments, by the way, I have to admit, some of the comments that I read on Inman are so 
funny in some places, in some cases, so scary, and in other cases, brilliant. I mean, some of you guys that read and comment on the uh, Zinman, uh, Inman articles are like, wow, really impressive. So uh, in the meantime, Jules, anything you'd like to say to all of our listeners? Nope. Be coachable. Do something with the information. Know what's going on with your business and take action to be a great listing agent. And a lot of this will cause less stress for you. So we'll see you on the radio tomorrow. And remember, if you need any help, if there's anything we could do for you at any time, please request a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com, freecoachingcallsforagents.com. We're here for you anytime. So we have literally 11 coaches that all they do all day is free coaching calls. So anything we can do for you, please ask. In the meantime, you guys have a brilliant day, and we'll talk to you on the radio tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.